Rich Tarani with TMC. Thanks for watching. We're at IT Expo 2014 in very sunny Las Vegas. And on the program is uh, Steve Brummer. He's with 151 Advisors. And um, Steve, welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. This Thanks. is our third interview. Third right? interview. First one was Dallas, I think. Uh, Dallas, and then we did Miami. Oh, actually, fourth then, if you count Atlanta. Okay, so, so yeah, fourth, fourth interview. Yep. Fantastic. So. Let's start at the top in case there's a company out there that doesn't know what you guys do. Great. So uh, 151 is a seven-year-old strategy advisement consulting firm for high-tech companies. We help companies in a lot of different ways from beginning to end in their strategies for getting to market in North America uh, and around the world. So we do everything from establishing companies, everything from tax ID numbers and accounting and addresses and phone numbers, all the way through building a go-to-market strategy, sales, marketing, business channels. How are they going to go to market with uh, resellers or direct selling approaches? Uh, do we do research for companies? All types of things as a firm. Uh, but primarily, we are focused in on driving revenue somehow for that company and building a strategy that works for them. That's what we do on a worldwide basis. Fantastic. So uh, at what point should a company reach out to you? And someone's watching this video right now. They're thinking, do I need 151 advisors? How do they know? Well, if you're an international client, uh, a potential client, and you're looking to come into North America, because as I said to you several times, most people still think that our streets are paved with gold. So if you're an international company, uh, even a medium-sized or a large company, and you want to come to North America, we are your one-stop shop. We provide you with everything that you need for, to get started in America. So if you're an international client, that's a great move for us. Use us, come work with us, and we'll get you going. It probably takes about six months to a year to get you going, and then we kind of get back filled with other employees from the company to take on all the work that we've done and move on. If you're a U.S.-based firm, one of the big, biggest things is that a lot of entrepreneurs get funding. They're very technically astute. They have a great widget, product, service, app, whatever they are, and they need the connections. They need to understand where distribution need, needs to come from, and they just need help taking that technology to market and so that's where we fill the gap because we have practices in the wireless uh, and mobile computing area mobile security uh, we're heavily into mobile enterprise uh, we have an IOT M2M practice that one of the things we wanted to talk about today so we're in a couple of different strategic vertical markets for companies and those companies are the ones that need the most help what trends have you seen in the last few years that people actually are accepting help from the outside, that they don't feel like they know it all. Uh, we find a lot of technology, and, and I, I know my, my partners are gonna laugh at this one, but we look at geeks that have a hard time selling something and are positioning it and marketing their product. And those are really great opportunities for us. So we work with VCs and private equity firms and investment groups. Uh, most of the time our clients have already had some type of investment already in them by somebody. We're not really good with the truly small companies that are just starting to get funding because we're not a, we're not a venture capital firm. We work with them to help drive those companies forward. But the trends that we're seeing right now are really coming up with innovative technology, trying to figure out, anybody can come up with an idea, it's selling that idea. So even tomorrow I'm giving a speech here on how to make money in mobile enterprise. Because somebody, somebody has to make money somewhere along the line when you, you know, you think, you, it, well it's either your friends and family and so your grandmothers and your mothers and your cousins and nephews are all gonna be mad at you because you spent their money and they haven't gotten anything back or the VC is going to be a little ticked off at you. So I'm all about giving uh, an idea of how to make money. What are you looking for from a market? Are you priced right? Is there competitive pressure on you to have a low ball price on something? And you really may not need to do that. So we try and come up with strategies for being able to take things to market and how you go to market. Um, you know, are you a total internet sales play? Different strategy, different way of going to market. If you're going through distribution, which distributors, are, which distributors are going to use? Um, if you're going to sell direct, all right, you know that's going to be costly. It's going to be where are you going to put them? What are they going to, who are they going to call on? What kind of lead gen programs are you going to put together? You know, what's your social media strategy going to look like? So we kind of look at all those kinds of pieces and then put it together in a, in a cohesive way of being able to go to market. So we're, we're very fortunate to have you on the program because of all this experience <laughs> you have with all these other companies. You I mean right. you're literally like a human encyclopedia of Oh, what companies God. do right? Don't and what tell they anybody do wrong. in my house that. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> 
Um, so the question here that I have for you is, uh, what are some of the biggest rooms for, room for improvement areas you've seen in some of the organizations you've worked with? Oh, wow, that's a, another good, you know, Rich, you do this to me a lot. It, um, I would say the, some of the areas that I think that are uh, lacking controls and understanding is really the idea of long-term growth opportunities. So many people are looking to get rich quick in an, from an entrepreneurial standpoint or sure. a business standpoint. And so obviously they're looking to make their money, roll up, do whatever they have to do to get going. And a lot of times we feel like the biggest, has, the biggest problem they don't think about, including depending on the board makeup and depending on who the, who the people are on the executive team, a lot of them don't think out they don't think three years or four years so or five years. So what is it, years. just uh, six months to a year? Yeah, I mean, or, 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 is, it, is it a pump and dump kind of thing? And by dump, I don't necessarily mean like stock. Uh, I mean yeah. pump and dump, yeah. meaning sell yeah. to Google. Yeah, well, or sell uh, of course, to, uh, sell to Apple. everybody lay, lays in awake at night thinking that they can sell to Google or, or any or of the Cisco other ones. Or, or, or any SAP. of other. And, and I think that's, you know, I think that's uh, most of the time unrealistic, right? So it only sure. happens to a finite amount of people on an on a ongoing basis. Yeah. I think the idea is that they, they think entrepreneurial and they think they're going to hit the hit you know the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow in a, in a very short period of time and that does not happen even if you look at vcs and private equity firms a lot of times in the old days they were looking trying to get their money back in less than two years sure. right today that's not the strategy as much it's a little longer term three four five years out so you as a owner of the business or a technology innovator who's building things for people, you need to start to look at the strategy of saying, okay, do I need a recurring revenue model? Is that going to generate more subscribers, more recurring revenue, which is going to give me a better valuation in the sure. long term? So we look at people and say, okay, well, okay, great, here's your short hit, but you know, where's the next product? I mean, we talk to some companies that only have one product, and then we start sitting down and go, well, what's your roadmap look like? Well, what do you mean? Well, show me the next two, three, four, five patents, the next two, three, four, five products. And a lot of people sometimes don't have that vision. And then that, that's a hard thing. So we're seeing a lot of those kinds of companies that then we try and find other people for them to partner with that may have a better vision, that may have other products that fit into the roadmap for them so that they can help accelerate their growth. So Steve, we talked a little bit off camera uh, on this topic <laughs> and I was just hoping that we can <laughs> In an objective manner, uh -oh. you're a company that advises organizations where they should locate. What is the effect of uh, taxation, various types of taxation, on the decisions which are made uh, by corporations which in turn bring um, employees or workers, uh, full-time and part-time, into those jurisdictions? Again, it depends on the company. Right, so if you're a manufacturing firm and you're looking to establish manufacturing here, so you're offshore, you're already manufacturing in Singapore and Taipei and, and somewhere else, it's a little different. So you're looking for states or, or areas of the country that are going to give you the tax <laughs> incentives to be able to do that. So what we were talking about is Startup New York, where there's a ton of manufacturing facilities opening up in the state of New York because they have a 10-year program that's open to them. So basically an area of the country which has some of the worst tax rates in the U.S. <laughs> for, for regular people. For regular people, but they put a 10-year moratorium on right? corporate taxes. Right. And Texas is another one. Right, Louisiana. The, the, the Louisiana State Economic Development Group is phenomenal. They are attracting companies like there's no tomorrow because of the idea of them being able to incentivize all these companies. Georgia's doing a great job. Georgia has done a, uh, a great job with car manufacturing, right? So we have a lot of those in the South, but in Georgia in particular, we have a lot of technology companies that are now building manufacturing plants in the state of Georgia because of the tax incentives that the economic development teams, both on a local and a state level, are providing for some of these companies. So Steve, let's take this one step further. If we've established that these municipalities, these um these cities, these states are luring businesses into their locations. Luring. Is that a good, is that a <laughs> yeah, word? Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, they're the, incenting them. The founders, <laughs> right, the founders right. wanted this, this kind of, this uh, push and pull of the states to be able to fight, uh, the founders of the country to, to be able to fight it out and to try different right. things and see which ones would win out. And, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what we have here. Right. We kind of have this, um, this petri dish of innovation <laughs> right. called the United States. Right. So if we've established that these areas that are uh, 
that offer, I guess, um, better tax rates are drawing in more companies. Does that show the federal government that they really are hurting the United States citizen, the, the taxpayer, the voter, the, the potential worker because of the um, high tax rates in the U.S. as compared to the rest of the world? Definitely an issue. Uh, you know, again, you're talking about two, article, two weeks in a row in Fortune magazine talking about inversion. Uh, personally, I think it's, it is definitely un-American. There are companies that are uh, taking their corporate environments to another country just to avoid paying the 35% corporate tax. Uh, you know, we see companies that are offshore wanting to come here, and they're not going to fall into that trap. We, we help them establish a subsidiary in the United States because we're worried about where the IP is located. But it also then is a byproduct that the tax scenario is not going to be here for them as much, right? Because the sale, the way the sales are set up. Uh, I, I just think that's, I think we're going to have to do something not only in a broad base on our tax base and what that percentage is on the 35 and get it down to something, 25, 20%, something to keep people incentive to continue to grow business and wow what about the idea of us buying an international company and bringing them here to the United States emerging them instead of us sending right. them to Ireland or sending them right. to Switzerland like we are now, now in the you, pharmaceutical market. You mentioned off camera that um, Canada's had some success right? Yeah. What, what's Canada, what have they been doing? Uh, well Canada has a lower obvious uh, tax rate, uh, a corporate tax rate than we do. Uh, they have incentive areas uh, in the Toronto area, for one, Vancouver being the second, where are those company, companies that are going up there, uh, the, the economic development teams for Quebec, for the Ontario province, are phenomenal. They are doing things like helping you with housing, helping you with establishing uh, office space, giving you the incentives that are necessary to work with the local governments there. So you're looking at a lot of different ways of being able to get uh, into those particular areas. And the other one I told you about was Costa Rica. I mean, Costa Rica's got call centers that are set up there. Uh, uh, Georgia Tech University has got a facility down there. And again, it's the incentives that those countries are offering them. But again, all these international, for example, we do, uh, we have had a, the luxury of having a relationship with the uh, government of Lithuania. You would have never thought of it, but they are unbelievably talented high-tech organizations there and young, entrepreneurial, great startup guys, they all want to come here because the European markets are kind of flat sure. and they believe that their wares could be sold here in a, in a bigger, bigger way. Sure. And so here's companies that are wanting to come here, establish themselves here. That's a huge opportunity that we, because of a 35% tax rate, should not discourage them moving. And, and it's interesting, this is meant to be nonpartisan, and, and the reality <laughs> is that both sides of the aisle have agreed that our yeah. tax code is insane and right. that it needs to, I think um, both sides have pretty much said, lower the rate, close the loopholes, right. and be done with it. Right. And it, it, the, the question becomes, is it going to be 15% rate, which is what I prefer, but you don't hear that too often, or 28% rate, whatever it is, it's got to be a lot less than right. where it is now. Right. You know, we, why right. not lead the world? Well, and the amazing thing about it, it's, it's the Levin brothers that are pushing this. So we have a, a, the two brothers, one's a senator, one's a congressman, and they're doing a great job of trying to brought, you know, come across the aisle and actually try and figure out something to do. Excellent. So let's leave this final 30 <laughs> seconds. Final 30 seconds. Give us the elevator pitch on why uh, an emerging company or a company that wants to get into M2M, uh, IoT, should contact you guys and start working with you. We have the connections uh, to pretty much everybody in the market in North America. We understand the business and how to make money in it as far as you, as if you're a manufacturer or have an app. Uh, we are simple to work with. We are very goal oriented, so we're driven by the statement of work of the mission that we're trying to accomplish for you. We are a full service firm, so we can handle so many different things for you. We have a practice dedicated to IoT and MTEM that allow you the customer to be able to dictate where we want to go using our advice. And I think from an overall standpoint, any of the clients that you want to talk to that are references for us will tell you that we are people of our word. We actually do what we're supposed to do and what we say we're going to do in the time we're supposed to do it uh, at a fair price that allows you to be able to get to North America or bring your product to market here in the U.S. Awesome. Thanks for being on the program. This Thanks is great. Thanks again to see me. Thanks, Rich.